Hello, happy Wednesday. Thanks for joining me. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, and we are here today. I'm going to turn my magic fabric, my new fabric from scraps, we are going to turn it into uh, to chevrons, kind of like the Charming Chevrons quilt that we are currently working on. Uh, thanks for joining me, guys. Thanks, Replay viewers, and thanks, YouTube Replay viewers, for watching as well. Again, my name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery patterns and kits. And I'm here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time, and we relax and craft, and we work on a project together. And we're continuing the Charming Chevron quilt. The top is all done. It's hanging out back here uh, waiting to be assembled into a quilt but we are currently working on the back of the quilt just getting started on the back and we started by over the past few days turning all of our teeny tiny itty bitty scraps all the little bits all the little threads into new fabric. So we have we've have three different fabric sheets um, there you can see the back of it. We just kind of sewed it all on there. Uh, if you want to see how we did that, the past couple videos, I think the last uh, two or three videos is how uh, we did it. We used the sulky stick and stitch to help us out. Here's the third one. Uh, tonight we are going to turn them into chevrons uh, and I hope it all works. I'm excited to see what it looks like. So that is the plan for tonight. Thanks again for joining me. Uh, I'll flip you guys around and we'll get going. All right, we are set up to cut tonight here. All right, hope you all had a great day today. So our pieces are all dry. We took the stick and stitch off yesterday and now every single little piece is dry and we can trim them. So they're kind of different sizes here. So I just wanted to, this is the biggest one. I wanted to just kind of get the ruler out and measure them. I want them all to end up the same size. So we'll probably trim, trim more off of this one. We'll kind of average it out here. Okay, so this is about 10 inches worth of, um, you know, fabric in there. Oh, you can't wait to see this, Sue. Me neither. I'm, I'm super stoked. I haven't really done this. Uh, to this extent before. All right, so I think this is probably the smallest one, and this one we only have like just barely nine inches. Um, you know, we will lose a quarter inch on each side for the seam allowance, but still, even with that quarter inch, we're barely pushing nine inches here. I think maybe we might just do the nine inches. Yep, yeah, this one as well, nine inches. So I'm going to trim all of these to nine inches. I'm going to use just this ruler here. These, this tape is from an older project that I don't even quite remember. But I'm just going to, uh, there's my nine inch mark and nine inch mark here. You know what? This is going to bother me. Time to come off blue tape. That's what it's there for, um, to easily be taken off. That's why I use painter's tape. Um, every once in a while it's, it's easy just to um, put some tape down if you're cutting a bunch of things that are the same same size. Oh, perfect. Came out easy peasy. Bonnie, it was sunny by us here today too, but super duper chilly. And it's supposed to be single digits tomorrow, if you can even believe that. Ugh, crazy. All right, and nine inches is right here. Is that the nine inch mark? Yeah, I got weird tape on this side too. All right. Oh, maybe we should try doing it nine and a half inches because then they'll end up being, well, I don't know. We'll just, we'll do the nine inches. The end, decision made. All right, let's get the rotary cutter out. Okay. I'm gonna trim this and then we'll rotate it and then trim the other side. I haven't decided if I'm going to keep these pieces or not yet. I think I think I might just get rid of those ones. All right, top and side. So now we're just going to rotate it. It just all of a sudden looks super duper finished, which I just love. 
All right, same thing. Nine inches here. Is that nine inches? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I always have to count because I always feel like I'm going to mess up. All right, about like that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Huh, looked funny. I always get nervous at cutting stages that I'm going to mess up my measurements. Oop, didn't quite make it through all the way there. There we go. Okay, so one piece down. Look at it though, it looks so fun! Okay, so that's the first one. Let's do the other two and then we're going to cut some red squares to match because we're going to do that. Um, we're going to do that way to make the, the half square triangles the same way that we did the chevrons. All right, we'll go right there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, about right there. All right, we're good. Oh man, yeah, I'm done with all this snow and cold though. Uh, done, done, done. I'm thinking most everyone else is feeling that way too. Whole pile of the country is dealing with the snow and the cold like we are here. All right, there's that nine inch mark. All right. I always get so nervous. Nervous for the cutting. All right. Two done. Look at all these funny little pieces. I don't know. I don't know what we'll do with those yet. I think they might just be. That might be our what's left of the trash. We're keeping this trash and getting rid of that trash. So here's the second one. Look at all that crazy, crazy stuff happening there. And I just really like this one. I like this kind of red area that went down here. These are all the little selvage bits. This one's a little smaller. So this one's just going to be within that nine inch area. Going to have to fake it a little bit, I think. About right there. All right. I can never talk. When I'm cutting, it makes me too nervous. I don't know, for some of you guys, I know you just love, love cutting. It's the cutting and the pressing that always kind of get me, like not my favorite steps and they all, they both kind of make me a little nervous, but I don't know. Let me know if cutting makes you feel that way too. Look, I still have double sweater on. I'm ready to be done with double sweater. All right, I'm gonna put these guys to the side. We are done with, with trimming these. All right, so this is our third one. I really like this guy. All right, so three. So we are gonna pair these with um, some of this red fabric. So now we need to cut a nine inch strip of this red fabric. Oh, this would be fun, just all, all like lined up too. Like if you just re-sewed these into like a quilt where you can just barely tell um, where the squares are because it all just kind of squiggles. Oh, I just kind of love that. One of these days we'll make a total scrap quilt like this. But for now, let's throw these to the side and we need to just cut a nine inch strip out of here. And I'm going to cut just the whole, the whole length. We'll use that red somewhere else too, so I'm not, I'm not too worried. I'm lining up uh, the fold up on the edge here. 
we'll get up a little higher so you guys can see. So there we go. I'm just lining up that edge on, um, on one of the lines of the ruler. There we go. And let's see, I'll cut a nice straight edge first and then we will um, cut the nine, nine inches from there. So get my bigger ruler out. All right, there we are. We're making new scraps though now. <laughs> Never ending scraps. There's always gonna be some scraps. All right, so now I'm gonna just go nine inches. I'm just gonna use my uh, my board as a guide. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It doesn't have to be perfect for this, I don't think. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right, we are good here. Because we're gonna ultimately trim this down a little bit. So if we're not totally perfect here, it's not gonna be the end of the world. All right, there we are. All right, I can, I can put away the rest of the bolt. We're not gonna need that anymore. And we're gonna have like plenty of this red left over too. So let's just roll this up. Ooh, there's a lot on here yet. Didn't really look that way, but it's, it's still a heavy chunk of fabric. That's what's left of my bolt. I had a whole bolt of this red. We're gonna be using this for the rest of the back of the quilt though. So I definitely need it yet. All right, let's rotate to the side. Uh, so now I need it three squares, three nine inch squares. So let's get rid of the salvages first. We'll cut two with this first cut because we were folded in half here still. So there's two layers of fabric. Again, I, I think I'm just gonna use the cutting board rulers as a guide. For some reason, I don't know, people have said to don't do, don't use the ruler, the, the mat, because it's not as accurate, but uh, when it, I don't have to fuss about measurements so much and then I just use it. It's just a hair quicker and easier than having another ruler out or rotating things, getting things perfect. All right, nine inch square. Great, so here we have two squares and now we just need one more. So I am gonna unfold this now because we only need one more. We need three to go with our three, um, three crazy fabric pieces. All right, that looks okay. I always gotta count, always gotta make sure. All right, this is our last three inch square. Perfect, okay, so here's our scraps from there. This guy we'll use later in the back of the quilt. Okay, three pieces here. And normally I'd say now's a good time to press it, but we're gonna press them really soon and I think they're, they're flat enough for what we need them for. So I think we'll just let them be. Um, so on these three, I am going to draw a line from one diagonal to the other. This is going to be just like how we did the um, the small chevrons. So we we made a bunch of these already for the chevron quilt. So here's the actual quilt, the quilt top. We are going to basically just be making two half square triangles with each of these. And uh, uh, you know, so we have three pieces, so we'll have like a zigzag like this when, when we're done, but bigger. So that is the plan. So uh, I just, I happen to have this sew line white pencil. It's like a white chalk pencil and that's gonna be perfect on this red. A, a normal pencil would have been fine too, but this happened to be close and it'll be, you can see it easy. All right, there we go. A line, let's do that for the other 
to. So ultimately what we're going to end up doing is sewing on either side of this line to make two, to make a set of half square triangles. And that'll all become real clear in a sec here. It's kind of a fun, a fun way to make half square triangles without any scraps left over really. Okay, there we are. So now we're going to pair them up with our other sides here. Oh, right sides together though. Jeez, I'm already going to mess up. So right sides together. This one doesn't really have a right or wrong side, so I'm just going to go like this. Okay, so that's one. Right sides together again. And I'll match them up a little bit better right before we sew. And the third one here. All right, so let's stack those up. I need to rearrange a little bit. We don't need the cutting board here anymore right now. So I'm going to actually switch over to my sewing table here. So we'll get up a little higher here. Okay, let's sew. All right, so what I'm doing now is I'm going to sew a quarter inch on either side of the white line. So we'll do We'll do all of one side first for all three of them, and then we'll sew, we'll, we'll turn them around and do the other ones. So I'm gonna start out with a little leader here, like a new, new leader. There we go. So I put in a new bobbin from yesterday, or from two days ago. We ran out of bobbin, and that's kind of why we stopped um, sewing lines everywhere. And uh, I threw in a new bobbin. It's uh, not quite the same color, but it'll be okay. And I need my stiletto. Help me shush things along. So I'm just sewing on either side a quarter inch. We're going to start on this side. So I have my quarter inch foot. I'm just running my white line along that edge. That was a quiet, quiet group. <laughs> I know, but it is kind of quiet today, isn't it? I'm just, I'm quiet because I was doing all that cutting. All right. Oh, you know what? See, I'm distracting myself already. Well, anyway, let's just finish this one up, I guess. Um, I, I didn't do the chain, chain piecing. We'll do that now. But yeah, so we sewed the one side, so we're just rotating it around, and now we're going to sew on the other side of that, of that line. Normally I would have done this all at once, but I got, I just, I don't know, forgot. All right, again, down this side. So now this, the fabric underneath is a different, um, thickness than this fabric, obviously, because it has all that other scrap fabric on it. So things are moving at a little different speeds. Um, it's not perfectly matching up at the end, but that's going to be okay for us. All right, now I'm going to now I'm going to start another one right at the end of this one. So again, let's match up corners and sides here. I'm going to just start right up with this second piece. Everyone's 
quiet because we're all just tired of the snow. That's probably what's going on. All right, there we go. So now instead of taking this one off, I'm going to come back and just start the next one right away. I know I'm super like focused on ooh, what is this going to look like, look like tonight. I'm not as chit chatty either. I'm just excited to, yeah, see how this pans out here. Oh, let me know if you guys got my email this afternoon. I just, uh, I sent out an email this afternoon with more info on my uh, Sulky webinar. I'm doing a webinar with Sulky next week on Tuesday, so April the 10th. And I had a little bit more info on what that's going to be about. So I wanted to make sure you guys saw that. And it is Finish It Friday. Oh, you guys got it. Yay. Okay, good. I always, I never, you know, quite know if those, if the emails get to where, where they need to be. All right, that's good. All right, so here's one of mine. We've sewn on either side of that, that white line down the middle. Oh, awesome. Thanks so much, guys, for letting me know. I, I appreciate that, that, that a ton. All right, we got to go on the other side of these last two. But yeah, I think it'll be fun. So it'll be about an hour long, the webinar, and, um, oh, you signed up good. Uh, and it'll, it'll be live in the sense that it's not pre-recorded. So um, you'll be able to ask questions, uh, kind of like how you are now. And then there'll be a time during it when um, we'll answer questions. And then any question you have, uh, will be answered later. They're going to have a PDF. Oh, awesome. You said your alarm. Yeah, I'm, I will also, I'll send you guys a reminder before it, or like the day of that it's on. And uh, my guess is if you sign up, um, Sulky will send you a reminder as well. Uh, if you, if you can't make it live, they have it on their site like forever and ever, but you still need to sign up to actually see it. And there's like some specials and freebies that will be happening too. So you'll need to, um, whether you're watching live or a replay, you'll, um, you should do that sign up. Oh, you love the little kitty here. I can, I have the piece here too. If you guys wanted to see again, but yeah, we'll be, we'll be going over how to make Make this little guy here. Uh, and it's with that craft text paper that's kind of like new goofy paper. And we're going to, I've crinkled it so it kind of looks like white leather a little bit. And uh, I'll show you guys how to do that. And I'll show you just my tips on stitching. Stitching with uh, craft text. And we'll make the little pouch with the cute little zipper, cute little lining. So that is the plan for uh, Tuesday. So this coming week on Tuesday. All right, we are done here sewing. All right, so um, we don't, oop, I didn't snip him off yet. All right, I'm gonna move the, uh, the uh, table here again so we can, we can trim this. Next up is trimming and pressing. This is what we spent like weeks doing with the um, with the pieces for the entire quilt, just because we had a whole quilt's worth of them to do, but we just have three now, so that shouldn't be too hard. Have to shimmy around in my little space, have this little table that we're working on. I'm also just turning on the iron now too. I have the... Uh, you can see I have that cordless iron that I'm borrowing from my friend. I have that up in the corner here. What's nice is I can just um, let it be, and before I do it, I can just um, set it to high, and it'll just charge a little bit in there, and it'll be ready to go when we need it. So first off, let's, let's trim. I'm kind of shimmying you guys all over tonight. Hopefully you're not getting dizzy. Um, they will have craft techs on the site to purchase, and it's coming more and more in in craft stores now too, in quilting shops. Um, so your local quilt shop might have craft techs, um, or you know, I'm, you can probably just do a search and it's, it's getting more and more readily available online and stuff. 
All right. Just a review. We've sewn, we've drawn a diagonal on here and we've sewn a, a quarter inch on either side. And now we're going to cut down that diagonal. So what's cool about this is look, we've actually made two half square triangles. We got this one over here. Yeah, it's gonna be so cool. And then we have a second one over here. So let's uh, trim this and it'll be separated. So right down that diagonal. Ooh, it's a lot of fabric now. It's getting thick. But there we are. So now we have two half square triangles and we'll press and trim these yet too. All right, so that's one. And here is the other. So this is our first, our first square. And then when we rotate them just right, there we go. We got that half chevron. Ooh, that looks so cool. I am really excited about this. We're gonna have this big chevron, like this mini trio chevron um, on here when we're done. I'm gonna just get a little higher for you guys so you can see. Oh, I love it. Look, it's like a scrambled little, little art piece. I love it how busy it is and then how um, just not busy at all, just bold the, uh, the contrast is between the two. All right, so that's our first one. Uh, we're gonna press these and trim them yet, but you know, let's do these other two first because we're gonna have to switch around again. I gotta get the ironing board out, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna use my um, new wool mat, wool ironing pressing mat. All right, same thing. Cut down that diagonal. And I just love that this is all garbage, right? Like th these are just all the scraps that we are gonna throw away. Ah, look at that. Look at that uh, red going up there. Ooh, a galaxy. That's totally, you're totally right, Lucy. That's what it looks like. Oh, Deborah, yes, do try this. <laughs> Created a firestorm of making new artistic fabric. Yeah, I am I'm, like totally obsessed. All right, so here's that second one. Let's just pair it with this other one. I wanna keep them um, matched with the same ones, just how we did the other, other part. There, rotate like that. <laughs> there, here's one giant chevron so far. And then we're gonna have one more piece here. So, all right, these two together, these two together. Last one. So this is gonna be just like a little, a little memory, really, of what's on the front, which I think is just super cool. And it's just something out of nothing. I just love, love, love that. All right, I wasn't sure that cut all the way through. It felt pretty thick. Ooh, this one's a little bit lighter. We had some lighter salvages and other things in there. Ooh, pretty. Does it look like the other way? Oh, fun. I love how um, we kind of got these little salvage arcs in there. Fun! You probably need to lower the pressure on the presser foot for the fabric thickness. I think you are totally right, Sharon, and I think I'll do that once we sew these together. Uh, so Sharon says that, you know, how we, how I learned, I didn't know this is a thing, but how I learned I could change the presser, like how, how tight the presser foot is against the fabric with that button on the top of my machine. Here, we can just shimmy over here. See, I can just pop this up. Boop. And now it's not as um, hefty, not as tight on the, on the fabric there. So, all right, I, I'll definitely have to remember to do that. All right, let's, uh, let's give this a press. All right, so let's, um, you know what? We're going to use this again, but you know what? I don't want to get it all hot from the iron, so I'm just going to move it down again. There we go. Let's get the new wool mat out. I like this size. I mean, they, it came in a bigger size, which would have been sort of cool, but um, this is going to work just fine for us. We'll go this way, though. All right. So I'm going to press uh, to the red side just because it is um, way less thick. I, like, I don't want to make this even thicker by, by having to bend this seam allowance over, right? So we're going to let that just be, and we'll give that a press. 
I did not figure out the feed dogs yet, Gretchen. Um, that is still got to be high on the agenda. I might need to just cover them or, or take them out for the free motion quilting. All right, so here we go, nice and flat. Um, we will trim these down so they're just the right size. You know, this is where in the top of the quilt we would have pressed, pressed it open. But since there's so much thickness on the one side of this, we're, we're not going to press open for this part. But we will, when we sew them together, we will press open and that's going to be super duper bulky. We're going to have a really bulky area. But you know, it's not the whole quilt, it's just a little, a little bit, so it's not going to be the end of the world. If we have to deal with, you know, a, a difficult area while we quilt for just, you know, 12 inches worth of a whole quilt, then so be it. Uh, I'm not using steam. So far that seems to be working just fine. Steam, steam on these triangle type things can sometimes stretch, stretch pieces out a little too much. Oh, after seeing the Matt, you wish you ordered one. Uh, I'm sure it'll come up on on a um, mass drop again. Yeah, I've been I had been looking at one of these for oh gosh years really, but you know they're they're pricey. They're like you wouldn't think, but they're they're kind of pricey. And so when it was on mass drop on sale, I I snagged one. But yeah, it seemed like it was probably a pretty popular thing. Um, so I'm sure they'll bring it back. Gretchen, I have no idea what size these are going to end up being. So um, there is math to do to have it be like, you know, uh, you know, if, we're, if you're starting with five inch squares and you do this, then you can trim it down to four and a half inch squares when you're done. There's, there's charts that you can go on uh, um, online that will tell you if you do it in this way where you you know, you draw that line down the diagonal and do two sides. There are charts that will tell you just how um, the size that you can end up with. Since it doesn't matter, since we're just doing these three and it's on the back of the quilt where I'm not measuring anything, we're just doing it, I'm deciding not to care. <laughs> Lucy, it should be about eight and a half inches. Okay, it'll they'll be about eight and a half inches. That requires math and knowing stuff, and that doesn't happen late at night. <laughs> so, all right, so they'll probably be about the eight and a half inches. And, and we'll see right now. We'll see how, um, how uh, well I sewed them. I might have sewed them too big or something. But I still have them grouped. So this is from that original square. You know, here's that original square still. And the other two are grouped as well because I want to keep them together. All right, look at all the little bits falling off of it, though, still. I'm sure that will be happening for ages and ages yet. All right, um, trimming. Let's get the cutting board. Making a floor pile of stuff. Oh, thanks, Patricia. I'm, I think they just are turning out cool too. So I haven't done this much with this, uh, with, um, these uh, like scrambled fabrics before. I've kept them as squares, so it's kind of fun to see see them turn out to like look like something. All right, let's see, what do we got going on here? All right, here's my, this ruler has a half inch edge, so let's see, we should be around that eight and a half. Ooh, not quite here, I don't think. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, it should be eight and a half, but we're a little tight. So you know what, I'm gonna just make them eight inches. Um, you know, it is thicker and I think I just did, I did my seam allowances maybe a little bit big. So we're gonna, we're gonna keep it at eight inches and be done with it. So normally I would, um, like a ruler where I have a diagonal. So this has a diagonal, but not, not exactly where I need it. Um, I like to have a diagonal go with the diagonal of the piece. But, um, 
Well, maybe we should do that. Eight inches. Yeah, because we are going to need... Where's the eight inch mark there? Oh yeah, there's no diagonal on that eight inch mark. So I'm just having um, the eight inch right there, that point meet up with the diagonal and the eight inch point down here meet up with the diagonal. So that's, that's what I'm aiming for right here. So we're gonna make eight inch pieces. Another little itsy bitsy scrap. Yep, this is gonna be the back of the quilt. Geez, I veered off there. Um, I'm trimming just so that they're, that I know that they're the exact same size. Then I think it will um, be able to, um, I'll be able to hook them together a little bit better. Yes, so I'm gonna do improv with the rest of it, Strazzy. So, so I have all of these scraps yet, all these bigger scraps. And these will improv piece together and we'll kind of add to this and then we'll fill in all the gaps with, with red. So ultimately it's going to be a red back of the quilt, but we'll have a few of these weird, weird things going on with it. So we got a whole pile of extra fabric there yet to play with. All right, let's do that eight inches again. Eight and eight. That looks good. All right. But yeah, I love, oh gosh, I hope that was eight. That felt weird. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ugh, gosh, freaking myself out. There we go. All right, now we have a perfect eight inch block here and it's pairing is up here. Trimming, trimming takes just a bunch of time I always find out. All right, so let's line up that eight inch mark on the diagonal again. Four, five, six, seven, eight, one more. All right, about right there. Oh yeah, it'll be like a reversible quilt, exactly. So this back will definitely be more of a mishmash, but I'm okay with that. It really will look mostly red, but it'll have just a few of these weird bits hanging out. Eight inches. Just trying to square up um, this nice edge that we just cut and still have the eight inch marks on that diagonal point. All right. So our chevron one is ready. We'll have to decide what, what order we want these in and stuff too. So let's get them trimmed first. Let's do these guys up here. All right, eight inches again. Oh yeah, I'm glad we went with eight inches because these are just barely, barely hitting the, um, ooh, let's cut the, let's cut the, hefty side first. An artsy quilt, the back of it. Um, maybe a little bit more. I think so. I just, well, all the fabrics I used were really kind of painterly too. So yeah, I'm, I'm excited. It is. So this, all this squiggle does kind of work well with, um, with the back of the quilt. Or with the um, with the fabrics I used on the front, I mean, because I did use a lot of painted-looking designs, and this almost looks painted. Still think it's like finger painting. All right, eight inches. I 
I'd like to get these sewn together tonight yet. We might not get quite done sewing, but maybe we can get the half chevrons done tonight. Can you enter a quilt for the back of the quilt? Oh, like in a show? <laughs> I don't know. That'd be kind of fun. All right. You know, I suppose we didn't really have to trim this down. Um, we did do it for the front of the quilt and it did help make things be a little bit more exact, but it could have been a little wiggly on the back. It wouldn't have had to be all matchy, but oh well. They're eight inches now. Nothing wrong with that. So they'll end up being seven and a half inches once they're sewn, because we lose a quarter inch on, on either side from the seam allowance. Okay, that's our second one. One more to go. Well, two more, but one more half chevrons worth. Then we can sew again. You can tell I'm, I'm cutting at a little bit of an angle because then I can cut both sides without like reaching too much with my arm. That's why I'm at this kind of goofy angle. There, I can just go up this way easier now. So I may actually throw these scraps away. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I used as many scraps as I could, but um, those might just get tossed. Because if I did this again with them, it would be super duper thick. And they're not small enough to sew together. Oh, I hate throwing stuff away, but I think we'll... They'll be, they'll be tossed, I think. These extra little bits. Yeah, I'm gonna have to start a new jar. The jar is empty, I, it's in the wash, it's, it's ready, it's getting all the red fuzzles out, getting ready for whatever is next with it. Oh yeah, this would be super fun to use to make a pillow top. That'd be a, a great way to use scraps. Okay, so we have our three pairs. I'm gonna just move the scraps out of the way a little bit here. All right, let's decide, let me move this guy again. Let's decide how we wanna lay this out. because now it matters what direction they go in. Like we don't want to accidentally sew them like this. We need them to be that the half chevrons. So let's see, we got this pairing and I'm just kind of, we'll just do a little test. You know, we, would, we wouldn't even have to do chevrons. Like the cool thing with half square triangles is look, we could just make, you know, I, made, I just made a stripe here, right? That's kind of cool, but um, we are, I, I'm just going to keep with the theme. So we're going to do another half chevron, so rotate, or another um, chevrons like we did for the front. Ugh, oh, looks so cool! It's like, it looks like garbage. <laughs> it looks like framed garbage, but I like it. All right, and then we have one more, so it's going to be like a dit dit dit. Um... There, kind of like that. There, I like that. It, it almost like starts dark because like we have this red here that kind of matches this. It kind of starts dark and gets lighter and lighter. That's cool. I like it. All right, I think I'm just going to leave it right here um, so I don't get confused. Although I, I'm going to have to put my sewing table down again. So let's, let's just keep them grouped. Because remember, if I rotate these different, then it's no longer... 
gonna be that half chevron. Get this guy back in here. All right, let's sew these guys up. So tonight I want to at least get these these chevrons sewn. Oh, we have we might have time yet. There's pressing and stuff involved, but we might have time. So all right, um, I'm gonna sew this seam together here. This is gonna be super duper thick. So when we press this, we'll try and press it open. Um, just so <laughs> the same amount of thickness is on either side. But again, yeah, it's gonna be difficult when we quilt it, but it's for funsies, we're doing it anyway. All right, so sewing down there. And then I'll just grab the next ones as we go. So I am gonna make it a little bit looser. So that's up here. So this is all the way loose. I know that's gonna be too much. So I'm gonna just, we'll plop it down so, oops, we're at the the four, so we got one little bloop up. And what that does is it makes the pressure on here a lot less. So in theory, it should be able to accommodate the thickness of all this fabric. All right, let's give it a go. So now, now I want to try and be a little bit better about. Ooh, see, it's pretty thick. We're gonna go up one more level. See if that helps get this guy. I want to be careful to like try and keep the edges together a little bit more. <laughs> Just because we did cut them all to like the perfect size now. Get in there. It is thick. I'm glad I I'm glad I um raised it up a bit. You'll need to slow down when you quilt over the quilt over the thickest parts and all should go well. All right, good to know, Deborah. Yeah, I mean, really ultimately in the whole quilt, it is just going to be these little pieces that we're doing it with, so it's not going to be the end of the world. All right, here's the next one. Fold that over and here is the edge we're matching there. Stick that right under. There, get get cracking there, buddy. These seams are not gonna want to move. Like, I'm not sure if I'll be able to press these open, but we're gonna give it a try. <laughs> All right, last last one. This one doesn't seem as thick. That one was pretty thick, though. It seemed. Probably could have snuck a fourth one out of here, but that's okay. I like it with just the three. All right. That is done. Let's uh, turn this guy off, snip the edges here. All right, let's press these. Press these and then we can sew them together. Maybe, I think let's just get this done. We'll, we'll get these three sewn tonight. All right, let's scooch over here. I'm gonna get you back to the iron. Um, get these guys out of the way. I'm working um, in this teeny tiny space here, remember? So, requires shimmying things around. So now let's get that mat here. Okay, so this will be a little challenging, but let's give it a go. Open the seam and zigzag down. Oh, to flatten it. Oh, Sharon, that's, an, that's a good idea. I've never tried that before. Um, yeah, you wouldn't be able to even see the zigzag because, you know, it's a whole crazy quilt thing anyway. Oh, I kind of like that idea. So I just kind of... Oh gosh, I don't even know if I'm going to be able to press the one side. Ah, look how cool it is. Love it. All right, let's just go right here right away. I think I... Yeah, this is still on. Oh my god. I don't even know where one side starts and the other side 
um, starts just because it's so scrappy. I think you're right. Let's just run a zigzag right up here. I don't think that's a bad idea at all. I mean, normally I wouldn't want to do that because you'd be able to you'd be able to see the zigzag. Actually, it's you know it's lying actually pretty flat. Hmm. Maybe I'm not going to worry about it. It's lying really flat actually. Squish it down there. All right. I think that piece is done, and I don't I don't. I didn't have any problem with um, pressing it open. Actually, that's that's laying great. Woo, that's good news. All right, these should all still kind of be in order, but I think I remember what order they were in anyway. I just kind of give it a little start. Actually, I think it'll be impossible for them not to be in order because, you know, that middle one is the opposite direction than the the ends. Yeah, I'm using just the weight of the the iron too, because remember this iron was um, pretty hefty, like it had like a heavy base to it. So that's that's working super well for these seams. Look at this, it looks even cool, like these crazy zigzags with this line going through, like that's a cool art piece right there, I think. Oh, I love like little abstracty art things like that. All right, that guy's good too. All right, that's uh, the, this is the middle one. So there we go. And last up, then we'll sew them together. Man, totally loving this iron though, the cordless iron. I cannot wait for, for mine to come. This is my friends I'm borrowing. Flip that guy around. Gosh, not to deal I have to deal with the cord. That's going to take, you know, pressing is one of my least favorite things and, you know, this is going to make it that much nicer. The mat, between this mat and that I can just throw around wherever and the cordless iron that has like this weight to it. Ooh, I'm going to be in business for pressing town. All right, that's the last one here. Awesome. Okay, so here is the plan now. We got these two are gonna go like this. And um, this guy will be right on the end here. So I'm not gonna worry too much about perfectly matching my points or anything. I'm just gonna wing it. Let's get these two together. I'm gonna, I am gonna use some wonder clips though. I'm gonna, I'm gonna use uh, just my little wonder clips here for to match these seams up so right where where uh we've pressed those seams open they're actually they're they're staying open really well so i'm not going to worry about them um coming apart or anything so this is going to be really thick for my sewing machine to sew through but we're going to give it a try all right put a clip there and because these pieces are a little longer than my normal pieces i think i'm going to clip them a little ways like in the middle here. I'm using clips instead of pins. All right and same with here. We'll just throw kind of a clip. And we actually now that I'm thinking about it I might need to s switch the thickness or like my the pressure of my presser foot um, in the middle of this because look we got two thick layers together here and we got two thin layers here so I'm gonna leave it um, looser for these two thick layers and then right when we get here I think I'm gonna tighten it up again and then we'll do the the um, normal the the um, bigger the like tighter presser foot for this last little bit eh, I think we'll be fine there just want to double check that I'm stitched the right side yep we're good all right let's do it We'll do this one and then we will uh, pin and do that other one quick and we'll see what we got. I might even, um, let's just press it tonight too. Let's get it done. So we'll be here, you know, we might be here like at a 10 more minutes or so than usual if that's okay with you guys. But man, I'd be super sad to leave this in the middle. We're gonna actually help it along by lifting up my foot here. Get it underneath right away. There we go. Oof, we're moving it in here. Oh, you're 
you're seeing that ironing mat and the iron in your in your future, Deborah. Yeah, I'm I'm loving it so far. We're kind of testing them both out. All right, getting to that point. All right, now I'm gonna get my um. I just adjusted the pressure on this, so now it should be tighter, which will be good for just these two pieces of fabric. There, we just went from a really tall piece to this shorter area here. Okay, and that is it. So let's get that other piece on. I'm gonna sew the other piece on before we before we press it. So let's um, let's scooch up again. Zoop. I know the irons aren't gonna be coming till May though. I'm bummed I want it right now. Well, I do have it right now. I'm borrowing it from a friend, so that's nice. Eee, look at it, love it. Okay, um, this piece goes on this side. So let's flip that around. Same thing, I'm gonna wonder clip that center together. Oh gosh, this is heavy. It's a, it's a heavy chunk of fabric here. But again. We're not being practical, we're being fun. All right, I'm gonna clip that in the middle. Oh, thanks you guys! I am freaking loving this. So like I said, I've, I did this once before for the back of a quilt just like a little bit, but I, I left them as squares. I just sewed in a bunch of squares. I hadn't um, I hadn't made like a chevron or anything fancy with it, so I'm and just how big it is, I'm super excited about this. All right, let's uh, let's do this piece and uh, press it, and then we are done, Zos. All right, let's give it a go. Here, I'll shimmy you guys over here more. Sorry if I'm shaking a ton tonight too. All right, let's oop, let's um, I gotta get the pressure on it up again. Or, or less looser so it can deal with the thickness of this. So I just just adjusted that on the presser foot. You know what, I might help it along again by just lifting up the presser foot, getting it started. I might have to give it a little push with my stiletto. There we go. Once we're under the, once the feed dogs get it, then we're usually good. Oop, I'm stuck over on this side, here we go. I'm stuck on something. Oh, it's the big bulky seam over here. It's trying to get over the front of the mat here. Oh, you got your email from Selkie. Oh, to sign up for the webinar. Oh, that's awesome, Holly. So good. So I, I figured they'd be sending out reminders as well. So that's that's good that Selkie is sending out the reminders too. All right. Get right in that seam. All right, now I'm gonna put the presser foot um, as tight as it can go again, because we just have the two pieces of fabric again here. All right, now we're down to that level of just the two pieces again. All right, and here it is. Let's press this guy. Ah, excited, I wanna see it. All right, let's get up high. All right, I need to trim this piece off here, trim that leader off. All right. Oh, I love it. So this is gonna be part of the crazy back of this quilt. So here we go, here is all, all the texture. I'm gonna press it flat again, um, or I'm just gonna press the, the, the seams in the back. Oh, I love that you can see, I love that you can see the selvage in there. It all kind of blends together, but overall it does kind of look like it starts dark and gets light. All right, let's just press it really quick and then we will call it an evening here. I'll shimmy you guys this way a little bit again. Oops, sorry. There. All right. <laughs> so this is gonna be pretty thick here. I'm not quite sure how this is gonna fly, but we'll do our best. 
give the seam a little, heat it up a little bit. Maybe you're going to use the weight of the iron again to help me out. I don't think the fabric bits know which side that they want to be on either. Ooh, now here's going to be a big issue. We're going to hopefully, <laughs> hopefully that's going to be not going to be the hardest thing to quilt over this bump here. We'll just squish it. How about that? All right, I'm going to just rotate it so I can get this little edge too. So this is the, um, you know, this side only has the two layers of fabric, so that's quite different than the chevron part. I still think this would be really cool as a bag, like as a tote bag. I'd like to do, do that sometimes, sometime. Oh, I still really like the back too with all the different, the different um, stitching. Both sides are kind of fun. All right, we're just gonna have a massive bump there that we're gonna have to deal with when we quilt. And that's just gonna be the name of the game. So we're gonna have three massive bumps to deal with, but that's it. We're really trying to squish it down best I can. All right, second seam. Oh, there is only two seams. I was thinking we had to do three, but nope, just two. All right, let's get in the middle there. I don't think the fabric bits know what side they want to go on either. All right. Got to get in there. There we go. Ooh, there. That one seemed to flatten in the middle a little bit easier. Okay, there we are. Oh, that didn't open up right there. Getting a little picky now, I suppose. All right, just the one more little seam here, and then we will be done with this part. So yeah, so tomorrow we will continue on this. Um, I'm going to be, this is for the back of my Charming Chevrons quilt. Um, we have all the other pieces, so we'll improv piece all the remaining scraps together, and um, we'll, we'll do the rest in the red color. So improv piecing tomorrow. I'm excited about that as well. Take those bumps on the front when sandwiching. Oh, that's a good idea, Deborah. Um, so Deborah says to like mark where these bumps are once we sandwich it together and then I'll I'll know um, where they live so I can kind of avoid them. All right here we are should just clean it up a little bit but ooh, I freaking love it. All right wow we did all that tonight too I'm I'm so in love with this I'm excited to get this uh, in the actual quilt. So all right guys I'm gonna flip you around and uh, I'll show you guys it's um, a little bit closer. All right, hello. So this is, let me just stop from shaking. Here we are. There, so it's, it's kind of big yet. So um, arms with, <laughs> it is kind of weird with this red thing here, but I kind of like it. Cool. I don't know what way it'll go. Maybe uh, I think we'll leave it horizontal, horizontal in the in the quilt. But maybe I like this better on the top like that. But yeah, here you can see up close, kind of all the all the little bits. And uh, we got a we got a little zigzag going on. Oh yeah, it looks like there's a hole in it or something with the, with this red here. <laughs> That's okay. All right, and uh, then we got the back too, which I think is pretty cool looking too. But that'll be hidden, that will be in the quilt. But there we are, I think um, that was a fun way to use up scraps and, uh, and still have it kind of reminiscent of the actual quilt. So I am stoked, yay! So thanks so much guys for doing that with me. I, I appreciate you hanging out here with me and um, letting me experiment and, and play with ideas. So uh, uh, tomorrow, like I said, we will continue to improv 
piece for the back of this quilt. We'll just we'll just sew all those other pieces together. We have um, we have just this bin here of the rest of our scraps. We'll just sew it until it gets bigger and bigger, and then we'll fill in the gaps with all the red when we're done. And uh, then we'll have a back of a quilt, and we'll finally get to sandwich this guy together. So I, I'm stoked. We are on our way for sure. Uh, so thanks for joining me again tonight. I will get this on YouTube at Penguin and Fish Movies if you want to see the process of all this again. Uh, since we did like we did like the whole process of of making these chevrons tonight. And uh, so if you wanted to see that again, um, it'll be up there on YouTube and it will stay here on Facebook as well. And if you guys do this, uh, let me know, share in the Penguin and Fish Crafters group on Facebook. I would love to see um, all your scrappiness that you make. Um, so awesome guys, I will see you tomorrow on Thursday then. Uh, and I hope you sign up for the Sulky webinar as well. There's a link in here for that. So see you tomorrow guys, good night.